Once again, good morning, and it's nice to see that sunshine, but it's, uh, you know, we take it when we can because we're going to get cloudy skies, some rain, some snow, all of those things, maybe not within the next two hours, but uh, it'll, it's, it's on its way. Um, uh, a guest coming in to chat with me today, we're going to talk about money. Paul Brown, you had a, everybody likes to talk about money. Well, sure. Okay. Paul, um, you and I were just rapping a little bit because you were back in the old, some what we call the old days in Toronto with the CKO radio. Yes, many moons ago, John, many moons ago. Yeah, part of me, a lot of the, a lot of the guys you'd know that I knew and, uh, CKO is it was it was an interesting venture at the time, wasn't it? And it just didn't quite survive. Yeah, they uh, had their challenges. They were uh, national, coast to coast, and uh, ran for a few years. But ultimately, uh, the ship went down. I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, enough of of those things in those days. You've got other things that's, that's on your mind these days. I'm talking about money. Increase in minimum wage, livable allowances, etc. I would think, Paul, it's pretty hard to find somebody who doesn't want an increase in the minimum wage. I would think the biggest concern is, yeah, get the more the merrier. But how do I get to that point? Sure. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion going around surrounding the issue. And uh, the, the, the figure that... Um, is being advocated for right now is $14 an hour. Currently at ten twenty-five an hour, a minimum wage worker is 19% below the, the low income measure or the poverty line. So bringing a worker up to $14 an hour would put them 10% above the poverty line. And then uh, going forward, we're in agreement with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce that there needs to be indexation. If you land on that figure that brings workers out of poverty, index it on an annual basis, we we don't need to have this argument every few years. It solves itself. All right. I, I just want to go back to a little bit just to explain uh, your role in all of this and what is your position and uh, who are you sort of blowing the horn for? Well, this is uh, locally being spearheaded yeah. by the Peterborough Workers Action Center, which is uh, just a group of volunteers and uh, low-wage workers that want to, you know, uh, educate fellow workers on what their rights are in the workplace, their statutory minimum rights, those sort of things. So since uh, minimum wage falls under the Employment Standards Act, it made sense that we would uh, pick up the ball and run with this. Uh, What's the response? I mean, I would think that you're going to get a a positive response, but there's there's going to be some negative activity here too. Surprisingly enough, we've been out in the community on the 14th of the the month in September and October. Um, Public support has been overwhelmingly positive. There have Mm -hmm. been some people with concerns, primarily the true small mom and pop business people that maybe have a handful of employees. And we we understand those concerns. A jump to $14 an hour is significant. But we think there's other ways that the provincial government could help those true small mom and pop businesses, Uh, some relief on personal income taxes. Let's say you uh, run a variety convenience store, maybe increased uh, revenue from lottery terminal sales, those sort of things. But when you're talking about minimum wage workers, fully 50% of minimum wage workers in Ontario work for corporations with 500 or more employees. So, you know, these uh, large national, multinational corporations certainly have the capacity to, to bring their workers' uh, standard of living up. Let's talk about the minimum wage now, coast to coast to coast. Uh, where does Ontario stand at ten twenty five an hour? At the high end, the middle, or the low? Where are we at this moment? Well, we're not at the highest, we're not at the lowest, and they're all fairly close. I think Alberta might have the lowest at, I believe it's around nine fifty, nine seventy five an hour. But, uh, Nationally, coast to coast, they are pretty similar. But uh, if you look at other jurisdictions like Australia, currently the minimum wage in Australia is sixteen thirty-seven an hour. And I just checked yesterday, the Canadian dollar is at absolute direct Par. parity with yep. the Australian dollar. Now, everyone says <clears throat> that might be ludicrous to go to that kind of level and costs will skyrocket and that. 
But in Australia, a Big Mac costs $4.62. In Ontario, that same Big Mac is $4.59. So there's not a correlation between uh, increases in minimum wage and uh, costs skyrocketing because, especially for these larger corporations, it's an economy of scale. They can certainly absorb those kind of increases. We're going to take a break and come back in just a moment or two, Paul. We're going to carry on this conversation, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here, and you and I are going to battle it out. How's that? Fair enough. Fair enough, John. <laughs> okay. You're listening to The John Badham Show right here on 90.5 FM. listening to here on 90.5 and my guest is paul brown and paul and i have been talking money the increase in minimum wage and paul all right let's uh, i've got a small store uh say two or three employees somebody comes in on the weekend so i can have a few hours off basically the mom and pop idea uh not totally against an increase in uh, minimum wage for my staff. But then all of a sudden you tell me, by golly, we just hit, it's going to be good. We're going to give, it's going to $14 an hour after I pick myself up off the floor that I got to pay. Uh, this it's got to be gradual, doesn't it? Well, the uh, provincial government currently has an advisory panel traveling around the province they're taking uh, submissions from all interested shareholders. Uh, I will be uh, with several other people locally going down to Kingston next week, uh, making a submission to that panel. Will you also get a chance to hear some of the other submissions there, or is it just you you at a specific time, open the door, go in, and get out? I was just wondering if you were... Well, be, well I, I've actually read some of the uh, oh, submissions yeah. by, like, the Canadian Food and Restaurant Association, the Ontario Chambers of Commerce, labor groups. So there's a, there's a wide range of uh, views on the issue, certainly. Mm -hmm. there, there almost seems to be consensus that there does have to be an increase. Right. And if it's a phased-in process, uh, that may might very well make sense. The last time there was an increase to the minimum wage, it was done over a period of three annual increases. Right. It wasn't right. all up front. Yeah. So, you know, I, our hope is that, you know, if it is phased-in, it will bring workers above that poverty line. And like I say, maybe once we get above that, then index going forward and it takes care of itself. But uh, even the Chamber of Commerce wants a system that's predictable, that businesses can uh, take account for going forward in their planning. Because the, the Chamber, correct me if I'm wrong, they're not against this. No, they're not. No, they're not. No. And uh, But you pointed out that they're probably looking at that incremental increase with a target of $14 at the present time. But if you got to sell that to a government, don't you? Well, yeah, and uh, the, the Chamber's position uh, is a little muddled. Yes, they believe in indexation, but I think they want to land at a figure substantially lower than that $14 an hour. So, again, if workers are below that poverty line and then you tie indexation to that, you just keep uh, workers in poverty into perpetuity. So that's not a solution either. Well, you're talking about $14 an hour. Then there's another group who are saying $16 an hour, and they're out there. It gets confusing. Who's who? What's going on here? I mean, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a jump from, you know, 10 and a quarter to $14, and then there's somebody else out there beating the drum for $16 an hour. Well, I, and I'm... And doesn't that breed a little negativity in the minds of some? Say, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, this is getting out of hand. Well, I, I, I'm familiar with what you're uh, talking about. The Peterborough Social Planning Council released a living wage study. Right. And they're not beating the drum for it. They're not saying that we uh, demand that wages be brought up. It was simply for uh, public awareness... It was a, a, a process that was uh, developed by the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, has been applied to communities across Ontario as well. And it just using the metrics and the data locally, saying this is what it costs to have a somewhat comfortable standard of living. Nothing extravagant, doesn't even take into account, uh, you know, savings for retirement or that. It is just the actual cost for a person would need to live in Peterborough. Peterborough has some unique dynamics. We have the uh, 
highest rental uh, relative to income housing costs in Canada. And we have, uh, I believe we're second now for the lowest average hourly wages in Canada. So you mix those two together, and it's not a good combination. But uh, certainly that living wage study shouldn't be confused with the issue on the minimum wage. They're just saying this is what it actually costs to live in Peterborough. Have there been studies from your organization or others uh, that, that think like you do at this moment about the negative aspects of it, the employment aspects of it? We talked about the mom and pop situation. But then there's other stores, you know, uh, let's say the big box stores around and everything else where the hue and cry was, oh, you know, don't bring them in here because they're, all they're going to give you is cheap labor. But, I mean, a job is a job is a job. And uh, all of a sudden, they take a look and say, 14 bucks an hour, we're going to have to lay some staff off. It isn't just the mom and pops, I'm assuming. Now, I just, I don't know. Has there been a, a study done on the negative aspects of this? Well, actually, there was a study done in the States by the uh, Center for Economic Policy and Research. And uh, they found that there was no discernible effect on employment with an increase in minimum wages. In Ontario, the last time they increased the mm -hmm. minimum wage, from uh, 2007 until 2012 last year, we added 150,000 jobs in the uh, sales and service sector in a down economy. So, you know, these arguments that employers are going to pack up and leave just don't ring true when uh, you actually study the, the past results from it. What about uh, part-time labor? Well, yes, there's, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of people on, uh, you know, part-time work uh, for a number of reasons. Some companies, and businesses, they don't want to give them full-time opportunity because all of a sudden you're into a benefit package and everything else. So like say, hey, whoa, you know, we'll only give you 30 hours a week instead of this. Is the dollar figure there changing for part-time versus full-time or what? Well, no, I mean, the minimum wage is a, a standard it, that's set it, by the government. That's it, regardless of how many hours. Sure, and, and actually mm -hmm. that's a, a, a major problem now with uh, many minimum wage workers not getting even full-time hours. Imagine trying to, to get by at ten twenty five an hour if you're only getting 28, 30 hours a week. You know, there's uh, something uh, wrong in our society when a person who's a good hard worker goes out, gives that 30, 35, 40 hours a week, you know, trying to, mm -hmm. to, to make an honest living. And at the end of the day, they've got to go to a food bank just to, to tie ends together. Well, there's, 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 no, uh, there's no dearth of hardship cases in the, in the community and all across the country. Um, what about those who are in the serving industry, the, the waitresses, the waiters, the, uh, you know, those that in reality rely on their tips? Uh, are they making the same amount of money on the low end of the minimum wage as the other person is outside of the of, of that industry? Well, actually, uh, servers uh, are on a different scale on their uh, minimum wage. I believe a couple of dollars an hour less than the current uh, ten twenty five. Because because they turn around and say, well, because you're going to you're going to get income through tips, right? And that's sort of the. Uh, the assumption, I guess, but uh, there's many people that serve us, uh, you know, our morning coffees and that, that aren't uh, raking in big tips. You know, they might get a, a few bucks here or there over the week, but, uh, you know, uh, to rely on tips to supplement a pretty meager income isn't the way. And it's not just servers. There's other whole uh, uh, groups of people and sectors that don't even qualify for the minimum wage, agricultural workers, uh, people that... Uh, look after children in homes, those sort mm -hmm, of things. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they can even be paid less than ten twenty five an hour. Oh, less? Yes. Well, well, I don't think they should be paid less. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't... Where do you go with this now? You're going to pre make this presentation uh, in Kingston to this traveling group, this submission. Now, where does it go? In the garbage can, or will it be really looked at properly and all? Because I always wonder about these, you know, these submissions and things like that, and then you wait and you never hear anything for the longest time, and then governments change, and you just, you know, you wonder about them. 
Uh, are they sincere to sit down and really listen to these things? Well, we'll have to see. Uh, we would hope that the Minister of Labour would take a, a good uh, hard look at this, take it to the Ontario Cabinet, and hopefully uh, see some kind of legislative change surrounding the issue. In the meanwhile, uh, we're keeping uh, our uh, feet to the fire. Uh, November 14th, we'll be uh, having groups out at Trent University mm -hmm. and Fleming College because many of those students... Uh, work for minimum wage or barely above it and are burdened with uh, some pretty significant student loans once they finish their educational endeavors. So we'll be out there uh, on the 14th, like I said, and then we'll be uh, dropping by Mr. Leal's office and, uh, you know, nothing confrontational, just uh, have an exchange Letting with him. Letting him know and everybody else yes. know what's going on. Exactly, exactly. I would think that at Trent University, you know, it's got to be really difficult at the present time. You know, you go to school, you learn, and you try to do this, and you're thinking ahead, and, and then all of a sudden you graduate, and you're up to your yin-yang and debt, and you you got a Ph.D. or an MBA, and you can't get a job, and you're you're making 10 bucks an hour. You say, what did I do, waste my time? I hope that uh, our time here today hasn't been wasted, Paul. It's been a treat having you come in and chat about this. No, uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to discuss the issue more. Thanks. Paul Brown, my guest, this morning. And uh, keep an eye on it. Yes, indeed, the uh, minimum wage. It's only got one way to go, and that is up. I'm John Badham. You've been listening to The John Badham Show right here on 90.5 FM, Strictly Personal.